Hi everyone, this is Melissa Stinson for Two Peas in a Bucket, and I'd like to welcome you to part two of my Project Life lesson for February. Um, you can see that I'm in Lightroom right now, so we're doing a little bit of something different. I need to warn you, this entire video is going to be on the computer, and it's going to be about printing, organizing, editing photos in Lightroom, and kind of a workflow that I use for both Project Life and also for my regular photos. If you are interested in printing non 4x6 or Instagram print sizes at a regular developer, you may want to, to follow along on this tutorial. If you're not really interested in this, then you may want to go back and find part one of the video, which is the creative, uh, creative angle this month. And I'm going to have a look at Echo Park's photo freedom system and their page protectors in that. You'll find part one in the class notes for this week's lesson. And if you're watching on YouTube, it's going to be linked up right under this video. If you're on the class page at Two Peas in a Bucket, then you'll find part one of the video right above this one. So I realize that Lightroom is a little bit expensive. It's about $120 on Amazon as of the time I'm filming. But it's been such a huge time saver for me. I mean, it is literally as critical to my scrapbooking as my paper trimmer is. It's the biggest reason I'm able to get so much done because it automates so much of sorting and editing and printing and even for me blogging because it integrates with Flickr. Um, if you don't have Lightroom and you want to try it out before buying it, you can get a 30-day free trial from Adobe. I'll show you here. Uh, that is the wrong web browser. I apologize. If you go to adobe.com and click on download and then product trials, you'll see Photoshop Lightroom 4 and click on try. And you'll have to register for an Adobe account if you don't already have one, but you don't have to give them a credit card number or anything. And you can download and install Lightroom 4, a fully working version, to try free for 30 days. On the editing side of things today, we're also going to be looking at some presets. Presets are Lightroom's version of actions, if you're familiar with Photoshop and Photoshop Elements. They are quick shortcuts or macros to help you edit your photos. Two Piece actually has a pretty good selection of Lightroom presets by Adrian Lumen in the digital section of the shop. And I've got all of these linked up in the shopping list below today's class page. If you want to get just one to try out, I recommend one called Clean Exposure. It seems to be the most useful. And a lot of these are geared toward some of the Instagram type effects where you make it look lo-fi, give it kind of a Holga or a washed out or a toy camera effect. But clean exposure is, is meant to just bring out the colors and, and make your photos pop. So while the workflow that I'm about to show you is in Lightroom, you can probably adapt it to just about any photo editing software that you use. I know that you can get Picasa free from Google. It'll work on both Windows and Mac. You can try it in iPhoto or Aperture, which is Apple's version of Lightroom. Now, there may be some different terminology in the software. It may not have all of the capabilities, or it may have some quirks you have to work around, especially in Picasa, and I'm going to try to show you a few of those on the printing side. So I mentioned in my January lesson that I try to keep my project life process as close to my regular scrapbooking process as possible. So when you see me using non 4 by 6 photos on my layouts, I print them in exactly the same way that you're going to see me over in Lightroom printing them for Project Life. There's no extra work for this. I don't do any extra Project Life specific setup uh, beyond having a separate set of folders for Project Life, and we'll get into that in just a little bit. And in fact, I print photos for both regular layouts and Project Life at the same time. And I'm going to go through the workflow that I try to go through on a weekly basis and show you how I select and edit and print photos. Now, I don't want you to get hung up on how to set up the print templates, which we are going to do in just a second. It's a little bit involved. It only takes a few minutes, but there are several settings that you have to adjust. And the good news is that once you adjust those settings and save them, you never have to do it again. So instead of showing you that in the course of the workflow where we would normally get to the printing section, I'm going to do that right up front. So right now we're in Lightroom's library module. What we want to do is to click over here to the print module. So in this top right hand corner of your Lightroom screen, click on print. 
And right now Lightroom is set up to print on a standard US letter paper. If you're actually printing on your home printer, you're going to want to leave it just like this. But if you're like me and you send out all of your photos to be printed at 4x6, we're going to need to tell Lightroom to use a 4x6 paper. To do that, come down to the bottom left hand corner and click on the page setup button. And it's going to bring up a page setup dialog. Now since I'm using a Mac, this is going to look slightly different than what you'll see on Windows but you should be able to do the same general things that I'm doing and, and get the same results. So under paper size, I want to use a 4x6. So I'm going to click this drop down and go to manage custom sizes. Now I already have a 4x6 set up, but if you wanted to create a new one from scratch, again on a Mac, you'll click this plus button and it will bring up a, a new custom paper size. Put in 6 inches wide, 4 inches high, and then set all of these margins to zero because we don't want, since we're sending out to a developer, the, the margins that your home printer would use aren't, aren't really um, applicable here. So after you've done that, you just click OK. You can double click here and give it a new name. I'm going to cancel since I already have a 4x6. And then click that drop down and choose 4x6 for your paper size and click OK. So now we're set up to print at a 4x6, but you can see that I have some margin around the edge of this photo. And Lightroom has gone ahead and inserted some margins for me. I'm going to go ahead and slide these sliders all the way to the left to set everything to zero so that this image fills the entire page. I'll also need to come down to cell size and slide these all the way to the right. This is how you would print a standard 4x6 photo. But what we want to do is put more than one photo on this page. So I'm going to start out by showing you how to print four photos, each at two by three on the same page. So you'll come back over here to layout, and I should point out that under layout style, you need to have this single image contact sheet uh, selected. Picture package lets you put several different sizes of photo on the same page. We want to do all the same size of different photos. So make sure that's selected. Then come down to Layout into the Page Grid section, and you want two rows and two columns. And each of these will be two inches by three inches. You can see I only have one photo right now. That's because down here in the photo browser, I only have one selected. If I were to choose four photos, it would fill in each of the quadrants with a different photo. Now there are two settings that are important here that we're going to take a look at over here in the image settings box. One is zoom to fill and one is rotate to fit. I almost always have both of these checked. Um, I will explain what each of these does. You can see that some of these photos are vertical and some are horizontal. Rotate to fit tells Lightroom to rotate a photo to fit within a cell. So these photos have been turned sideways automatically. If I didn't have rotate to fit on, it would basically just zoom in on the photo. If I didn't have zoom to fill on, which tells Lightroom to fill the entire available space in the cell with a photograph, then I would just get a small vertical image. So I like to keep both of those checked. Now, if you don't want to print with white borders, this is all you need to do. And to make sure that you save these settings, you come over to user templates. You can do a plus in the template browser to add a new template. And I'm just going to call this one test. You might want to call it two by three and hit create and then right click on this and do update with current settings. And now whenever you select this template, Lightroom will automatically bring up these paper settings and these cell size settings. Another cool thing about this is that no matter how many photos you choose, as you can see there are 323 of them in the particular folder I'm in right now. Lightroom will put all of them on their own pages and make as many as needed to, to get them all printed. So let's say I'm going to hit Control A or Command A to select them all. And Lightroom, if you look down here, has now made 81 4x6 prints, each of them set up with some of these photos from this folder. So if you wanted to print an entire folder of, say, vacation folders for uh, vacation photos for a mini album, this is a great way to get that all done in one shot. Now to add white borders to your photos, you need to adjust both the margins and the cell spacing over here in the layout box. 
there are a left, right, top, and bottom margin, and you have to put a value in for each of these depending on how big you want your border to be. I usually put in a tenth of an inch, and so I'm just going to click in each of these boxes and put in a 0.1. And you can see that Lightroom is adjusting the edges of the photo and slightly cropping these photos down, sizing them down to fit in the new smaller spaces. The cell spacing, remember, is shared by two photos, so both this photo and this photo share this gutter between them. So we have to make sure that we put in twice as much border so that each of them gets a tenth of an inch. So for the vertical cell, cell spacing, I'm going to put in a 0.2, and also for horizontal, 0.2. So now whenever you cut these apart, you'll get a tenth of an inch on each photo. Now there's one more tiny little thing that we have to do, and it has to do with how a developer prints your photos. What they do is they take your 4x6 print and they slightly enlarge it to be a little bit larger than 4x6 and then print it to avoid getting these white borders. You may notice that if you send off a 4x6 print and you get it back that the head may, uh, someone's head may be slightly cut off or some things on the edges may be cut off. That's what's happening. So in order to avoid that, we need to add a little bit of extra space all the way around the edge. Now, this isn't exact, but I found that for printing at Snapfish, which is what I use most of the time, or Sam's Club or on my home printer, an extra 0.12 inches will usually take care of this and you only have to do it on the outside margins. So I'm going to go ahead and update these margins to include that, which means they each now need to be 0.22. I'm going to go ahead and put those in. And this is the finished page. And once again, there are still 81 pages of these, and I can flip through, and they have all been resized. And in order to save this, I'm going to uh, once again come over here to this test template, right click on it and update with current settings to save those margins. Now these have been cropped down to be slightly less than a 2 by 3 ratio and if you don't like where these photos are, are positioned inside the cells you can click on one with your mouse and grab it and move it around a little bit to get it positioned where you want. So with the template set up to go and the photos selected the last thing we need to do is actually print them. Now we're not actually going to use a physical printer to do this, we're actually going to output files that you can then upload or take to your developer that they can print. Now under the print job setting here on the right hand toolbar, there are, so, there are a couple of different ways that you can print from Lightroom. There's the printer or a JPEG file. You're going to want to select JPEG file and set the resolution. I have it a little high here. Normally you'll want 300 ppi. And then come over and right click again on the same template that we've been updating and do update with current settings again to make sure this is saved. And your JPEG quality should be at 100%. And with that, all you have to do is click print to file. And I'm going to go on my desktop and I'm going to give this a name and hit save. And Lightroom is going to automatically start exporting all of these as JPEG files as 4x6s, and you can take those exact images and upload them to your developer. So if I go over here to Finder and click on Desktop, this would be Windows Explorer if you're using a PC. I'm going to go into the demo folder that I created and wait for it to finish rendering this first photo. So usually this goes a, a little bit more quickly since I'm also doing a screen capture while I'm outputting images. My computer processor is a little bit overloaded at the moment, but I wanted you to see that it is outputting the files. And if I double click on one of these to open it up and show you, again, this may take just a second. This is your nice 4x6 all formatted up with your four different photos ready to send off to your printer. The last thing I want to show you how to do while we're here in the print module is to set up a template to print an Instagram or a square photo. And I have an Instagram photo selected here, and it's in that same template that we just set up for printing 2x3s. And as you can see, it's not quite the right aspect ratio. So I'm going to set this up to print at 4x4. And the first thing I'm going to do is come back over to the page grid and set this to one row and one column, just like we had before. I'm also going to remove all of these margins. We'll reset those in a second to what we need it to be. Since we don't need a white border because Instagram photos already have a frame, if, you want, if you're just printing a square photo and you want to add the border, 
do it just the same way we did it for a two by three. Um, and for cell size, I'm going to set four inches by four inches. And there is your beautiful Instagram in the middle of the four by six. Now remember, we're gonna have that same problem with the developer slightly enlarging this and then printing it on a four by six and cutting off these edges. So for the top and bottom, I'm going to come in and add that 0.12. And again, you may have to play with these numbers to see what works best for your printer or your developer. And that reset my cell size since I can only have a 3.76. So I'm gonna go ahead and you can either go ahead and set the width to 3.76 or you can click this keep square box and it will make sure that both of these match. So this is how you should be able to send off to print an Instagram photo and then when you get it back just trim off all the white parts. I have a contact sheet set up to print 3x3 three three, so I get two 3x3s three on a sheet. These have the margins as well because I use these for printing square photos and not necessarily Instagram or a four by four, or you can print six two by twos. And it's just play around with these grid settings, with your cell spacing, with your margins until you find what works for you. And then make sure that you save your template. Now you can use Picasa, which is a free app from Google, to do some of the same print uh, functions that I just showed you. But it has a few quirks that made me decide to use Lightroom instead, and I'm gonna show you what those are. So I've just got a random, very, very random folder of photos selected, and I'm going to choose four of them of different orientations. So I have a vertical and three horizontals. And to put these on a 4x6 in Picasa, I need to come down and click on this collage button. And I've already got the 4x6 print size cho chosen. This actually comes pre-configured in Picasa, so you won't have to set that up. And if you want white borders, you can drag this, gr this grid spacing until you get the amount of white space that you like. Now, one of the things I don't like about Picasa is that there's no way to enter a number for this grid spacing, so you can't make all of your photos uniform with the same, the same uh, border and the same image size. The other thing I don't like is you can see this one vertical photo hasn't been rotated like Lightroom will do. You can work around this. If you go back into the library or if you click on this photo and hit view and edit, you can rotate this photo to be on its side and then when you come back to the collage, it will insert it that way, but you have to actually physically rotate every photo that you want or else you have to just choose photos that are all vertical and all horizontal and choose horizontal and vertical here. And the last thing that I don't like about using Picasa is that if I were to choose those 300 photos, it would try to put all 300 on the same page. It doesn't have the concept of creating pages like Lightroom does. So Picasa will work. Just be aware that there are some things you're gonna to have to work around with it, but it is free. And if you would like to download it, you can go to picasa.google.com and download free. It'll automatically detect your operating system and give you the correct one to download. There's also a utility called Photosheet that is free. Um, it works on Windows and since I have a Mac, I can't show you how that works, but that is another option. Uh, there are some several threads on 2Ps about using it and it also has some online documentation. So just some alternatives because I know Lightroom is a bit expensive. So now that we have looked at our photo print templates in Lightroom, let's go and look at a whole workflow and how I process a week's worth of photos and print both my Project Life photos and photos for my regular scrapbook pages at the same time. And I've moved back to the library module to show you a little bit of how Lightroom helps organize your photos. And I have to admit that I am a lazy photo organizer and editor. Wrangling photos is my least favorite part of scrapbooking. I mentioned that in last month's video. So I'm using Lightroom to make it as easy on myself as possible. Um, I spend between 15 and 30 minutes each week, usually on Sunday afternoon, downloading all of the photos from my phone and my camera, my husband's camera, for the past week and going through and choosing the ones that I want to print and getting them ready to send out to a developer. I try not to spend a lot of time on this, mainly because I don't have a lot of time and if anything is going to take uh, you know, very long, I'm just not going to get it done. So it's between 15 and 30 minutes a week. If there's been a major event like Christmas 
or when I went to CHA and came back with 2,000 photos. It's going to take a little bit longer and sometimes I will put most of those photos off to edit at a later time and just get the ones that I know I want to use on layouts or for Project Life done at once. So Lightroom makes it very easy to sort on the metadata that your digital camera automatically embeds in your photos as you're taking them. Now as long as you have the date and time set on your camera, that, that information is automatically attached to your picture when you take it and Lightroom can read that and will automatically sort and organize your photos based on those dates and times. Because of that, I don't do a lot of tagging. Actually, I do almost no tagging. I don't do a rating system. I don't even delete duplicate photos for the most part just because it takes time to do that. I would rather just choose the ones I know I want to print and just let the rest be. It doesn't really hurt anything just to have them sitting there as long as you have the hard drive space for it. So you can see right now I'm in my complete Lightroom catalog, which has more than 83,000 photos, which is kind of crazy, but this is about 10 years worth of photos, so I, I think that's about right. I can sort them all using dates and several other pieces of information that have been embedded by clicking on this metadata button at the top of the, at the library. Now you have to be in the library's grid view to see this. If you're on a single photo view, it's not going to show up. The grid view is down here in the bottom right of your photo, photo viewing section. Just click on it and then click on metadata. And you'll see this drop down that has several columns. The two that I use the most are the date and which camera did I shoot with. If I'm printing for Project Life, I'll use this date filter to select just the previous week's photos. And today is February 3rd. I'm filming a couple of weeks in advance. So I'm going to select all the photos for last week and I can do that just by clicking on each day to pull them up. I start my Project Life week on Sunday and now I have all of the photos that I took last week and it only took a few seconds. Now this was kind of an odd week for me. Um, I went to a birthday party on Sunday and then immediately went out of town for work for a week and didn't take a ton of pictures while I was away and then took some more when I was home uh, the next weekend. So I have 208 photos. Obviously, I take a lot of duplicates, uh, especially when people are talking. I like to take several in a row because people can make some very odd facial expressions when they're speaking. And that ensures that I get at least one or two that, that turn out okay. So don't worry, I will not be printing or editing or even really looking at most of these for more than a few seconds. So as I find photos that I know that I want to use in Project Life or in regular layouts, I will just add them to the quick collection. Doing that is really easy. Lightroom gives you several ways to do it. You can either right click on the image in the grid view and select add to quick collection, which is right here. If you're down here on the photo strip at the bottom showing you your previews, you'll see a tiny little circle pop up when you mouse over. You can click on that and it will add it to the quick collection. My favorite way to do it is to look at the photos each individually and scroll through using my mouse button. So I just use the right mouse key and as I find one or left, if I, as I find one that I want to add, you can just hit the B button on your keyboard and it adds it to the quick collection. So let me add a few. Um, this was a surprise party. So this is my aunt looking quite shocked that we're all here and obviously the exposure on this is not quite right. So hopefully Lightroom is gonna help me pull that out. I'm gonna go ahead and add it and hit B and keep scrolling through until I've gone through all of my photos and chosen the ones that I know I want to edit. So I finished selecting all of my photos from this week's that I'm going to want to edit and I selected 48 which is about twice as many as I have on a normal week. Usually it's around 20 to 25 but since there was a birthday party and a couple of other things going on the number was a little bit higher. So now I'm going to go through and edit all of these photos. And when I say edit, I'm not going to spend any huge amount of time on each of these photos. Usually it's about 10 to 15 seconds each. And I'm going to use those presets that I talked about in the beginning of the video to make this a lot easier. So I'm going to head over to the develop module and I've already selected a photo down in the bottom. So when I go to develop, that's the one that's going to show up on screen. This is my niece Sophie hugging her piggy bank. And you can see this photo is maybe slightly underexposed. It's not bad. The white balance is a little bit warm. Other than that, it looks pretty good. So I'm going to use that clean exposure preset by Adrian Lumen that I talked about just a little bit earlier. And all I have to do is click on that 
and suddenly this has adjusted some brightness and contrast, but now you can really tell that this photo was too warm. Lightroom makes it very, very easy to adjust white balance, which is what will give your photos either this yellow or this blue tint. All I have to do is click on this little dropper and then find something that is either black or white in the picture to click on to tell it what the neutral white is supposed to be. Now you can see in this top left hand under the navigator, as I move this around, it's giving me a preview of what this is going to look like. So if I were to say click up here in this green area, it would go very blue because it's trying to make that green the equivalent of white. So I'm just going to undo that with Command Z or Control Z, since obviously that's not what I wanted to do, and try to find something that is a good pure white. And I think that these dots on Sophie's shirt will work nicely, so I'm going to click in one of those. And you can see that it just toned it up just a little bit. So I'm liking the way that this looks. I might adjust the, the whites a little bit just to give it a little bit more brightness without washing it out. And then I'm going to click over here on a split view to show you the before and after. So it's just a couple of really quick, easy, easy clicks to give your photos a little bit more pop. And it doesn't take very much time at all. And now that I'm looking at this a little bit more, I would like to straighten this photo up a little bit. So I'm going to go back to the single photo view, again down here in the bottom left of the photo viewer. And there is a small crop diagram that you can click in the basics section. And all you have to do is click next to the photo and move your mouse up or down to rotate the photo until it's about where you want it. And I think that looks pretty good, so I'm going to leave it there. Press the Enter key and I've straightened up the photo. So this is what it looks like with a nice, clean, normal preset. If I wanted to go with one of the more stylized looks, I could choose something like the Soft Vintage to give it a washed out effect. And again, these are very, very easy to use. Just click on one. I'm going to go ahead and undo that so I can show you another one. Um, Dreamy Blue is sort of a black and white with a slight bluish tint to it. And Cherry Kiss, which will give you high contrast and lots of color pop and fade out the neutrals quite a bit. So there are so many things that you can do with these presets. I tend to use a combination of the presets by Adrian Lumen, the ones that come preloaded with Lightroom, Auto Tone and Medium Contrast Curve are both excellent, and then a set from a company called Totally Rad, and I love their Bright Side and their Auto, and their auto Tone as, as well. So I'm going to go through and edit the rest of these photos. Again, just a few clicks each. I may adjust some of these sliders to fix some contrast or exposure as needed. Let me go back to the original state with this photo and show you how that works. If you want to adjust exposure up or down, all you have to do is click on the slider and drag it backward or forward. If you want to adjust highlights, whites, blacks, then all you have to do is adjust these sliders. So you can edit using presets, you can edit by hand, Lightroom lets you do it any way that you would like. So let me go and edit these and I'll be back in just a few minutes. So I'm back and I finished editing all the photos and I was curious as to how long it was going to take me with a, a few extras in the mix since there was a party this week. So I set the stopwatch on my iPhone and it took 19 minutes and 53 seconds. So between that and the five minutes that I spent going through the photos from this week and picking out the ones that I wanted to, to work on, we're at about 25 minutes right now for this process. And there's only one step left, and that's to choose which of these photos I want to print and at what size I want to print them. Now on the layout side, I, may, I usually just select some photos that I think will work well in a block or in one of my usual arrangements. Uh, I tend to, to scrap a lot of 4x3 and 2x3 photos. And so I've got some arrangements already in my head that I tend to work with quite a bit. And I may choose, say, two 4x3 and two 2x3s to put together in a block. So for example, let's say these two photos of my mom and Sophie. I know I want to put them both on a layout together. And let's say I want to do them both at 4x3. So all I'm going to do is select both those photos and to select multiple photos out of the grid view, we're back in the library by the way, just select one and then hold down your command or your control button if you're on Windows and click as many photos as you know you want to print at that size. And then click on them again and drag them over to a folder. 
Now I've set up folders for the various sizes that I print at on, an, on a regular basis. I will show you why I do this when I get to the print module. These, I, like the print templates, I did these all at once. I don't have to do them every time I go print. So I'm just going to drop both of these in the 4x3 photo, uh, 4x3 folder, excuse me, and continue doing that for all the photos that I know I want to put on layouts. Now for Project Life photos, I do the same process, except that I have one of those Project Life planner template pages in front of me, the ones I talked about in my January lesson. And I use that just to make sure that I'm printing enough photos or not too many photos to fill the spaces that I have available. I don't plan the entire page out from start to finish at this point. I, I kind of know how many photos I'll use, and so I'll just make sure that I print a good mix of sizes and that I get a good representation of the entire week as I go through. The journaling and where the embellishment and all of that is going to go, I tend to leave until I'm scrapping the actual page. So that's how my Project Life pages end up being scrapped to almost like my regular layouts. I have the photos printed ahead of time and they're already in the right sizes. And then when I pull everything out, how I put it together is usually a surprise to me. I just kind of wing it and make it work in the end. So I'm going to go through and choose the photos for this week, like this one of my brother and Sophie putting the Legos together. I know I'm going to want to print at 4x3. So I will click on it, drag it over to the 4x3 folder in my Project Life collection, and then just mark on this sheet that I've used up one of the 4x3 spots. So let me go and select all the photos that I want to print, and then we'll come back and I'll show you how to output the final product. After I've selected all the photos that I want to print for this particular week's Project Life layout and bend them in by size in these folders under my Project Life print collection, then I'm going to move from the library module where I am now over into the print module. And I've already got the 4x3 contact sheet selected. I did turn off the zoom to fill. I can turn that back on depending on whether I want Lightroom to zoom in or not. Sometimes I feel like having the actual aspect ratio of the photo and sometimes I want the entire section filled. So I switch back and forth. I'm going to leave it on for now and go ahead and just select all of the photos in this 4x3 folder. And just like I showed you when we set up these, these printing templates, Lightroom has created enough pages to print each of the photos. And if you don't like where they're cropped to, again, you can just click on the photo, grab it, and move it up or down until it's framed the way you would like it. And the reason that I bend the photos by size is so that whenever I want to go and print all of my 4x3s, I can do them all at once, select them all, select the template, and go. Same thing with, say, my 4x4s. I've only got one of those this week. I select the 4x4 folder. I select the 4x4 template, I would select all of the folders, all of the photos in the folder, and then click the print to file button, just like I showed you when we did the, the, the template setup. Now normally I don't print these from week to week. I will let them build up in these folders until I have, say, a coupon code or I just need to print a whole bunch of photos at once, and I'll export several weeks worth at one time. So we've gone through my entire photo editing and printing process from start to finish and within 30 minutes I had photos for my project life layout for this particular week along with photos for several traditional layouts that I'll probably want to scrap at a later date. So you can see that once you have everything set up in Lightroom this whole process goes fairly quickly. So I hope this has been helpful for you in your photo printing process this month. I'm going to also go ahead and link up a couple of other tutorials I have on my blog. One is the text space with screenshots version of setting up those printing templates and printing out photos. Another is a way that you can do the photo resize and putting on a 4x6 canvas in Photoshop or Photoshop Elements. And the last is a text space version of the Picasso version of setting up several photos on a 4x6 canvas. So I hope you find those to be helpful, and next month I'm going to cover how to print on journaling cards for Project Life, or really any layout, using your home printer. Thanks for watching!